If you've just bought the DJI Mini 5 Pro, you will have got the free ND filters. Well, today we're going to look at this mega 16 pack by Freewell. It's got NDs, NDPLs, PLs, CPLs, LPRs, UV, mist. Confused? Well, today we're going to break it all down. I'll go through where you would use them all, why you would use them, and how to use them, including the maths behind it. So let's have a look inside the box. Well, it's definitely warmer inside here, so let's have a look inside the box. You get three different boxes. Let's have a look at this one first. And this is the ND filters, and nice stiff box, and inside we've got a, a full range from 16 to 1,000 in this box. And we have the CPL, a UV, an LPR, and a glow and mist. And this box is the NDPL filters. And we've got from N8 to 256. To break down what they all do, let's start with this box here, which has UV filter in. Now, UV, it cuts, cuts out the ultraviolet rays. So this will really help with uh, sunlight when you get that haze coming through but these days they're really more used for protecting your lens and uh, for cutting out those odd hazy effects now you'll notice there's no actual covering over the lens so that's why popping on the uv filter and just leaving it on there as a protection is always quite a good idea now to fit these you can see there's a wider area on this side and not on that side and you can see that matches on the filter here. And you see you've got the ridges above and below. And likewise on here, there's ridges above and below. So all you need to do is just pop that on here. So it clicks on and then you're ready to go. And just here we have the LPR, which is a light pollution reduction. So this is really useful at low light when you've got artificial street lights, for example, and you're getting heavy glow that's affecting your footage and this will just help control that. So dusk, low light, sunsets, when you've got street scenes, city lights, this, this will be when you'd use this one. This is the glow mist. This is really useful if you want to do a more creative type footage and you want to give it a, a soft glow, a dreamy-like effect. That's when this is quite nice to use, especially around water and things like that. CPL is a circular polarizing filter. So again, this would be really good for cutting out uh, glare and unwanted haze, especially reflections off water and shiny objects, wet roads, leaves, and things like that as opposed to say metal objects. And this will just help control that, that glare. Now in this box here, again, you've got the CPL, a whole set of them, but they've got an ND filter on them as well. So if you want to control your shutter speed, then you can put different ND filters on when you're using your um, camera in manual mode and you can control the exposure, the shutter speed. So you therefore use different ND filters here, but you've got the advantage of also having the CPL, the circular polarizing um, filter here as well. And again, if you put the camera into portrait mode, you can just turn the uh, lens there to help uh, cut out the rays, depending on where they're coming from and where the sun is. So you'll notice with these filters, you can rotate them. So if you put your gimbal into portrait mode, the glare will be coming from a, a different angle in relation to the lens. So you just can turn this so that it will cut the glare from whichever angle it's coming from. So it would take a little bit of experimentation. But that's how these work. And in this box here, it's a straightforward ND filters. And uh, these would be used when you just want to control the light for your shutter speed when you're not really worried about glare and things like that. So maybe uh, for night photography, night video, when you want to do a really slow shutter speed, maybe when you're using hyperlapse, for example, these would be really useful for that as well. And it will help control the highlights and lowlights. 
So now we've had a look at all the products, we can see what we've got here and when you're most likely to use them. Now we want to know how to use them. So with these filters here, when you're using the just the CPL and the UV, uh, you might, and the glow, you could just leave your camera in auto mode. When you're using the ND filters, because the aim is to control the shutter speed and get motion blur and control the whole lighting, then you'd want to be going into manual mode. Because you've got all the different strengths of the neutral density, you've got to work out which one to use. Now, you could decide on what shutter speed you would want or aperture you would want and just keep popping on a different ND filter until you've got the right exposure or we can do the maths. So to do the maths, each ND is one stop. So ND2 is one stop, you double it, ND4, ND8, ND16, etc one two three four stops you're doubling now if you want to reduce your shutter speed you do the same so if you're at 800 one eight hundredth of a second shutter speed and you want to reduce that down 800 halved is 400 that's one stop halve it again 200 150 so to bring it down from 1 800th to 1 50th, you're going down four stops. So that would be ND2, ND4, ND8, ND16. You would put on an ND16. So you could just put your, turn your drone on, see what the exposure is, and then work out well, how many stops I want to bring it down. Choose your uh, ND filter accordingly. So we're going to go outside, we're going to do some examples like that where we're going to slow down the shutter speed to our desirable, to get our desirable effect and then we'll choose the right ND filter accordingly. So let's go outside and take a look at how that works. We've got this fabulous waterfall here so to try out the video and the photography to slow this waterfall down to get that buttery smooth silky look to it I'm going to do the video first, so flick from auto mode over into pro mode. We can see what it automatically wants to do. I've got the drain switched on, looking over at the waterfall here. Now you can see the ISO is 100 and the shutter wants to be 1000, 1250. It's going up a little bit because the sun's just popped out. So we want to bring that down to let's say one over 25, one twenty-fifth of a second to try and smooth it out. So let's just experiment with that. So to follow um, the rule that we've learnt, so we want to bring it down, let's say 800, so 400, 200, 100, 50, 25, five stops, ND2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So I'm going to start with an ND32. Now we can always play with the ISO to adjust that. So let's start with that. See what the sun does now because it's bright. I'm going to use an ND PL filter. So that we can now bring that down to 25. Bring the ISO to 100. And now we've pretty much got the settings we're looking for. So let's just launch the drone. I'm also going to put this into a D-log so we can just have a look at that. Let's now get into photography mode. So we're in pro mode. Let's just have a look. So with this filter on, I can get us down to tenth of a second. Let's see how that looks. Fifteenth of a second. And then let's go thirtieth of a second. 
So that way we'll get a nice comparison between these different exposures so you can really see the effects that we're going to get on this water. So just here we're going to use the hyperlapse. So I'm just going to use the free mode where we'll fly the drone manually. So I'm just going to put dial in the settings here and uh, just see how beautiful these effects can be. So I've put the drone further back over the lake and quite low. The sun's just over here, it's quite strong. So you're going to get a lot of glare. So with the glow and mist filter, you should get quite a nice effect. So I'm quite interested to see this in post-production. Um, you will find these geese will start following the drone around. I don't know why. It's, uh, the drones seem to be like mother goose. So we'll just fly it towards us and uh, We've just put the uh, UV filter on. I'm just going to fly it around me and then you can get a better idea of what it looks like with UV. Does it make much difference? I'm glad I had a, uh, a filter on earlier because uh, I was flying so close to these birds. They're splashing around and um, drone's got water all over it. So, but the lens is nice and clean, of course. Right, I've just put the uh, ND filter on and I'll put a 512 on and it's popped the drone just up there. So now we can really control the settings. Now we put a, a crazy filter on. So if we just go into pro mode, I've already made the adjustment and you will see, I've dropped the ISO down to as low as go, which is 100. And now with the shutter, I can get that down to at the moment with this light to one quarter one fourth of a second. To do hyperlapse in these kind of modes, it's letting me bring that shutter right down as I want it to one fourth. There we go, let's see what that looks like. And there you have it, nice little hyperlapse effect. If you want to go from drone pilot to film director and turn your DJI Mini 5 Pro into a flying cinematic beast, then these Freewell products are amazing and will do exactly that. Plus, it's loads of fun that's going to keep you entertained. So, I hope you've learned a lot there, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.